Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what kind of INFP you are and if you are really an INFP. And beyond that, we're going to be going into the INFP subtypes and INFPs depending on their level of health and well being. Now, as you know, the INFP is introverted, intuitive, and feeling, and finally, they are perceiving types. But Truth is, most INFPs only have a strong preference on two of these traits, right? So, which means that you're going to find that you wear slightly towards two of these specific traits, and that's going to play a major difference on your subtype and what types you might identify the most with, and also, just in general, how you show up as an INFP. Now, the first things you want to compare are introversion and perceiving. Now, introversion and perceiving can be divided into two different subtraits each, which means that you're going to find that you probably identify a little bit more with one of these two. Now, what's the difference between these two types? Well, first, what you're going to find is that if you're a perceiving dominant subtype of an INFP, so if you identify strongly with perceiving, you will be a person that's more inclined towards adaptability and collaboration, right? Adaptability is going to be that you first Think flexibly, you're more spontaneous compared to other INFPs, while other INFPs, especially introverted INFPs, might be more about stability and consistency and more about doing things on their own. You choose to work with other people and you choose to look at what your environment is doing and you choose to take a more flexible stance to life. You could also say that perceiving subtypes are more playful, they value recreation while introverted subtypes are more private. They value their private world and their introspection and their inner thoughts and that life more than the more fun and entertaining world of perceiving. So, beyond those two, we can talk about intuitive and feeling subtypes, right? Here, what you're going to find is that if you wear more strongly towards intuition as an INFP, and yeah, INFPs can veer towards intuition, you're going to find that you are going to be a little bit more big picture in your attention. You're going to say that you often get distracted, your mind is often in the clouds, you often find yourself wandering, daydreaming, and engaging in a lot more of imaginative exercise. On top of that, you're going to find that you often find yourself more task-oriented. You focus on problems and issues in life that you'd like to change, or things that you'd like to do, or goals you'd like to achieve. And you find yourself thinking more about you know, where you'd like to go, or things you'd like to experience, and less about people, right? Because feeling is more agreeable and more people-oriented, focusing more on emotions, vibes, and experiences, how things feel, and how you move together with other people. Feeling chooses for harmony, while intuition goes against the crowd. And so, in many ways, intuition is more rebellious, while feeling is more accommodating and more harmonious. If you wear more towards feeling, you're going to find that you have more natural presence as an INFP. That means that you're going to say that, well, I live more in the moment, I find myself being more attentive to details in my environment, I tend to be a good listener, I tend to be a person that gets very immersed with what I read or what I see or what I hear, and so if I'm reading a book or if I'm you know, talking to a person, I'll be completely engaged with that activity and I'll miss track of other things that are happening around me. You're also going to find that you're more diplomatic in your approach to things. And yes, INFPs that veer towards smart feelings will say that they are more focused on the emotional realm. So they will be more focused on processing their feelings and the feelings of other people and meeting personal needs and choosing for things that will give them positive, pleasant experiences. If you're more an intuitive type, you're going to find that you're more in the intellectual realm. You have more theoretical interests, you might be more inclined towards academia, you might be more interested in cur and more curious and things like that, right? Now, both of these INFPs are going to be naturally open-minded, positive individuals, and both of these INFPs are going to share this common interest towards modesty, so not really putting yourself above others. And secondly, they're going to be people that are they're going to be people that are more precise. And with that, I mean, you value quality over quantity, you don't rush results, and you take your time in doing and solving problems. Now, let's talk about what the four subtypes are. First, you have 
the feeling and perceiving subtype, the bard, journalist or performer. If you're more inclined towards arts and musical expression and towards self-expression or towards the idea of being a journalist or being more curious about other people, you're going to find that you have strong feeling and you have strong perceiving. So these tell the stories of themselves and the people around them and the tribe. On the other hand, if you're more introverted but still a feeling personality subtype, you're going to find that you're more of a healer or counselor. You're going to find that you're more focused on introspection and interpersonal aspects and topics, contemplation, and really figuring out why we're here and what the point of life is and all those things, right? If you're more intuitive and more perceiving, you're going to find that you're more of a rebel, an innovator or a detective, somebody that connects the dots, figures out what's going on, somebody that is good at thinking about different ways to do things, somebody with high creative associative intelligence. Finally, if you're more introverted and intuitive, you're going to find that you're more of a sage, writer or philosopher. And yeah, this is the INFP spectrum. The INFP spectrum contains all these different variations of people. And if you have them all in the room, you'll find that some people would be more quiet, some people would be more observant, some would be more playful, some would be more calm, some would be more focused on people, and some would be more focused on ideas and worlds and theories and things like that but those would all fit within the INFP spectrum. You can also find that some of these might veer too far into these topics so that they might even be another personality type entirely. Yeah, you might not be an INFP. You might, for example, veer more strongly towards judging, or you might veer more strongly towards extroversion, or towards sensing or towards thinking. So if you find that you go even deeper into these traits than what I talked about here, well, the chances are you might be another personality type. What's often going to happen, and the primary reason why people doubt their own personality type is because we have an experience changes in our mood. Now, you're going to show up the most like an INFP when you are in a flow state. That's when all your thoughts and ideas and behaviors align to one and that you act in the most natural and confident manner. We are the most likely to enter into flow and we experience the highest flows when we engage in our dominant traits and intelligences. So when you do things that feel natural and confident to you, you engage in flow. On the other reverse end, we have disintegration. If a task becomes too difficult to the point where it feels impossible, you're going to find that you sweep over more towards stress, right? In stress, you're going to find that your behavior might change. If the stress becomes too much, we change our strategy and so an INFP might become more rushed and more stressed like an extrovert, always trying to get things done so as quickly as possible, more assertive, more rude, more loud, speaking over other people. You might find that you even become less open-minded, you find yourself becoming more short-term focused, more practical in how you approach things and so on and so forth. And these things happen in a state of disintegration. So often how these traits show up is not always positive, right? So it's often the negative version of these traits that are generally neutral in their ways, right? An ESTJ in a healthy state would show all these traits in a generally positive manner, but an INFP wielding these traits because they are less skilled at them, because they've had less practice at them, might well, find that they show up in a more negative manner. There's of course healthy stress, and as long as the stress feels manageable, and as long as, even if it's outside your comfort zone, and even if it's scary or difficult for you, it will provide you with character growth, right? So, as long as a trait feels natural, and as long as it's in line with your motivations and what you want, you're going to find that you err more towards a more, perhaps, extroverted strategy and a more perceiving or judging strategy than you normally would. But you'd still find that you would retain your intuition or feeling in these activities, and you'd find that you do something that you enjoy, something that's interesting to you, and so an INFP might show up more as an ENFJ under growth. Finally, we can talk about rest, and that is when you're bored, right? So if there is no challenge in anything that you're doing, if you're not motivated, you're going to find that you enter into a state of rest or autopilot. And in these states, our actions become more habitual and our activities become more low effort and more lazy, right? And so you're going to find that the better you are at the cognitive function or the better you are at the skill, the higher you're going to have to set the challenge for yourself to maintain a state of flow. 
If you don't challenge yourself, you're going to eventually fall into a state of boredom or lack of motivation. So you're going to have to increase your goals and set consistent challenges for yourself to ensure that you grow as a person. It's also healthy and natural to sometimes lower challenges, especially if you've been through a difficult situation lately or if you've been pushing yourself a lot lately. And then you want to try to engage in mindful rest, which is conscious but unaware engagement in activities that are low effort and more calming and more relaxing. For example, this could be cleaning your room, but making it something attentive and aware, something you do slowly and carefully without stress, right? Because you want to do and engage in these tasks and activities because they help you relax and help you unwind. You don't want these activities to be something stressful and maddening and uh, this difficult. When an INFP is more under stress, they might show up more as an ISTP personality type. Now, ultimately, your mood might change and your behaviors might change depending on which situation you're in. If you're in a social setting or if you're by yourself, if you're at work or if you're in a recreational setting. But most of the time you want to look at and study how you are in a state of flow. How are you at your best? What do you do that you enjoy the most? And what happens when you engage in situations that feel comfortable and natural for you? How do you show up when you're by yourself doing something you love? and when you feel fully comfortable to express everything that you are. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video. Now, if you want custom insights into what kind of INFP you are, I offer extended personality reports. That's a 30 to 35 page long report with insights into your natural strengths, your subtype and how you show up as an INFP and what kind of INFP you are. More about that in the link down below. Thank you so much for watching.